day. Amen. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place for all generations. For the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. Shall we stand, join in with our choir? Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
scripture lesson is taken out of Romans, Romans chapter 7, book of Romans, chapter number 7, come on, start at verse number 14, again, that's Romans chapter 7, starting and beginning with verse number 14. A few of those verses following. If you found it, if you have it, don't mind standing in for the uh, reverence of God's word. Please do. And if you got it, say, I got it. I got it. If you need a minute, say, wait a minute. All right, the word of the Lord it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am kernel sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow now not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Amen. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's word. His word is already blessed. Amen. Amen. Come on, Brother Deacon. Good morning, church. Good morning. Truly, God has been good to all of us. Yes, yes he has. Allowed us to come into the church house one more time. The day is Father's Day. Yes, thank you, Jesus. But the Bible says that you should always honor your father and mother. Amen. And I truly believe that, as we said many times, that it only takes three to five minutes to say hello. When your father or mother leaves you, it takes a lifetime to say goodbye. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Our Father, the maker and creator of heaven and earth, we come this morning with his power, with a humble heart. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us all. Father, we thank you, thank you for a station on Angel by our bedside last night. Yes. That we slept in slumber. Yes. And through it all, we suffered no hurt, harm, or danger. Yes. And we rose early this morning, we realized that we still had portions of health and strength. Yes. For that, we say thank you. Yes. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know, but draw thyself from danger. Where shall I go? We're weak, but thou art strong. And we realize, oh Lord, that we just keep on praying. Pray and believe. We're going to be all right. We ask, oh Lord, that you would bless each and every one that's assembled here this morning. Those who have a desire to come that 
able to take it, we ask for the blessing too. Father, we ask that you would just stop by the hospital. There's somebody there, Lord, that needs you. Somebody that's locked down in the jail. Somebody that's There's somebody out there that's homeless. They don't even have a place to live in. We ask, oh Lord, that you would just look out for them and pray for them. And pray for them, Lord. Yeah. Help them out. We know you will. We said we stand, all of us stand in the need of prayer. Yes. yes. And we look around, we find that there's so much going on in the world that sometimes we feel we don't even want to turn on the TV. Because there's trouble throughout the world. People in, in the streets are doing every crime known to man. They have no regards for life. And we realize, oh Lord, that this trouble that we see, only you, only you can bring peace to the land. We ask, oh Lord, that all of these wars that's going on throughout the world. And there's always some mother or father crying because they have lost a lot. This is just not sometime. This is every day, every hour, and every minute. Someone is losing a love. But we should not forget to pray. Pray and ask God to yes. cleanse the land. Yes, Lord. And we know that if we just keep on praying, Pray. that everything is going to be all right. Yes. We ask that you would best our pastor, Brother Smiley, yes. Brother Bullock, yes. and all the members and friends that are gathered here today. We realize, oh Lord, that it's a bright side. Somewhere. We just got to keep the faith and keep on praying. Pray and believe. And everything is going to be alright. This is my prayer in Jesus' name.
thank you for being obedient and bringing forth of the tithe and the offering. We know the blessing is stored up and predicated in the giving. That's why he says, more blessed to give than to receive. He loves a cheerful giver. Church clerk is ready now. Digging his Ralph will come down to the church now. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. All my this morning, so I will read the morning announcements. First of all, happy Father's Day Amen. to all the fathers. We Amen. love and we appreciate each and every one. July the 2nd, I made a notation of this because and I voted because on July the 2nd at 10 a.m., which is on a Tuesday morning, we will have a combined choir rehearsal. Also on July the 9th at 10 a.m., there will be a combined choir rehearsal. July the 28th at 3 p.m., Pastor Smiley will be the guest preacher at Union Bethel Baptist Church, and that's in King George, Virginia, where the Reverend Donnell Howard is the pastor for their homecoming service. The combined choir will accompany pastor. Dinner will be served, and all members are encouraged to attend. August the 14th at 7 p.m., Pastor Smiley will be the guest preacher at Ebenezer Baptist Church at Midland, Virginia, where Reverend George Cahill is the pastor for their revival service. The combined choir will accompany the pastor. All members are encouraged to attend. Please don't forget September the 8th, second Sunday is homecoming. October the 6th at 2 p.m., Pastor Smiling will be the guest preacher at the Mount Olive Baptist Church, that's in Unionville, Virginia, where Reverend Earl Bungry is the pastor for their church anniversary. The combined choir will accompany the pastor. All members are encouraged to attend. Pastor Smiley is asking if anyone has need of anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to him or one of our church officers of the church. The church will assist as best as we can. Please tell a neighbor. Tell a friend, tell everyone about our weekly services. Sunday school class starts at 9.45 a.m. Our Sunday morning devotion starts at 11 a.m. And our Sunday morning worship service starts at 11.15 a.m. Our virtual Bible study is at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday night. This has been a reading of the church announcements. Thank you and God bless. And we have something special for our fathers. If you have a father here or you're the spouse of a father, please come up. <laughs> Just let you know that we appreciate all. We appreciate everything we do. Your encouragement. And don't think it doesn't go unnoticed.
just think about your father, all that has passed on, as well as those that are here. Let's just have a that I should condemn the light just for a second. We're going to have a moment of silence for all the fathers. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're just so grateful we don't. This is really our only true day, isn't it? This is about our one. <laughs> and, 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 and the birthday, if they come through, amen. So we thank God for uh, fathers and their contribution to life and the livelihood of humanity. Uh, certainly there is a place and a season and all that good stuff for the fathers. Amen. Uh, we try to do the best we can to be provider, protector leader in the home type thing. So we just appreciate all the prayers that is so very necessary. Uh, it cannot be done and is not done without the prayers of, of the families and the family members. Because we need your prayers, amen. amen. Y'all know prayer is just so important for everybody now. Amen. We live in these trying, I mean these are some trying times. Ooh. Last and evil days, mm. and, it's, and it's, 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 it's behaving just like it's the last and evil sure. days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, praise the Lord for that. I'm gonna get out the way now. Um, um, I think the first lady might want to thank you all for your uh, last Sunday. Father wanted to say something. 
I don't want to hog up the whole. Y'all want to say something, Father? They but a couple. They but a couple of us up here. Come on, come on, Ray. Bring through the land of the amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, Ray. Oh, yeah, Ray, you say something? <laughs> what you got to say, Ray? Come on, say something to us. On behalf of the fathers. God bless y'all. <laughs> amen, amen. Did you approach him? I second that. All right. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all Praise the Lord, everybody. Let us all stand for prayer. And if you're going through anything, there's anything you want God to do for you, let us just lay it all on the altar right now. All we have to do is ask, and God will do the rest. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Our Father and our God, as we come before you now, first of all, we just want to lift you up. Yes, we want to give you the highest praise. Yes, because God, you and you alone, you and you alone, God, yes, all by yourself, you deserve the highest praise. Yes, you are the all everlasting God, the almighty God, the God who can do anything but fail. And you are God who is faithful. You've told us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And God, we know that it's true because we've been through so much, but you were there with us all the time. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for how you look beyond all. Yeah. 
continue to use the family for your glory. Do likewise, God, with all the officers and members here at Glasgow. Oh, God, bless them. Bless their children. Bless their grandchildren. Have your way, God. Keep us all on one accord in you. Father, continue to have your way in this service. Have your way, God. Oh, God, as our pastor stand on his feet to bring forth your word, Oh, God, do a new thing. Yes. Take him behind the veil and feed him from your throne room. Have your way, God, and open up our hearts to receive all that you have for us. And we'll always, at all times, continue to give you all the praises, all the glory, and all the honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. Amen.
trying to get out the way. The Spirit can have it on me. Thank you, Lord. In my heart. Well, there, there, there is the devil, of 
course, and he's like as a roaring lion walking about to and fro in the earth, seeking whom he may devour. But then there is the flesh, which, which, which the Bible says is contrary to the spirit. The Bible calls it the body, and in, in our body, in my body, Paul says, dwelleth no good thing. And then there is the world. We have the world that comes against us because the Bible says any friend of the world is an enemy of God. The Bible tells us to be not conformed to the world, but be transformed, and come out from among them and be separate, talking about fellowship and yoking together with unbelievers, good God and workers of iniquity in this dark and evil world in the which we live. Have I got a witness, church? And so it is that we have enemies that work against our faith. Yes. Especially when we're trying to, do, to go good and do good and trying to do what is right. And, and, and that's what I really want to talk about, trying to do right in a world full of wrongs. Paul writes in our text today to the church at Rome and, he, and to the saints and the church at, at large. He speaks to the Romans, but he expressly speaks to you and me. He shares with us about the general struggle and the, the experience uh, that, that, that is experienced by all mankind when we desire to do good and do that which is right. He simply says, I find then a law that when I would do good, when I, when I, when I, when I desire to do good, when I try to do good, when I, when I seek to do good, when I, when I make efforts to do good, when I, when I do everything I can to try to do good, he said there's a kind of law like when I would do this good thing, evil is somewhere present with me. The NIV Bible reads, I find this law at work when I want to do good. Evil is right there up in my face. Now, nobody may mention that when I, when I want to do evil, good is present. It didn't say it like that. But when I want to do good, evil just right up in my face. When I desire to do good, evil shows up on the scene or evil is acknowledged as being right there present and accounted for. But the spirit in which he speaks suggests that the evil present is working against his desire to do right, his desire to do good. His thought is, I'm going to do good, and then evil is present. And then there is a sense of frustration in that Paul is wanting nothing more but to do always to do the right things. And as much as his body wanted to go contrary, as much as his, his thinking and his presence and his being in this flesh, good God is, wants to go contrary, as much as he wants to do right, yeah. evil just right there, Amen. right there waiting to trip him up. Amen. Wanted to always do that which is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. But Paul noticed that there was this little unwritten law at work. The Greek calls it the nomos, or a principle, if you will. Not a legal law on our legal books, but more of a principle type law. Have I got a witness? Kind of used like we say the law of physics or the law of gravity, or a principle, if you will. And, and, and the principle Paul no noticed is when, when the desire is swelled up in him to do good, or when, when, when he, he, he would, uh, Greek word theo, uh, meaning strong desire to do, or urge, or intend to do that which is good. When I desire or intend to do right, there's a struggle that presents itself. Can I get a witness, church? There's a struggle within my body trying to pull a little bit against the desire to do good. Because evil and wrong stand right next to me, and, and, and the evil is a propensity, a propensity or a tempting urge that is contrary to right doing. Have I got a witness, church? And that propensity, and all of us, I believe, in here can, can, can pay tribute to the fact that there is something that come against you every time you think about doing something good. Amen. That propensity to do wrong makes it difficult to carry out the right. It makes it hard to do the good. 
And so whenever there is a desire and an urge to, to do good, evil is present and it causes a certain level of conflict. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness, church? And see, we live in a, in a do-wrong world. We live in a world that don't mind doing wrong, acting wrong, walking wrong, talking wrong, behaving wrong. And we live in a world that don't mind crossing the lines of right and over here. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me. And so whenever there is a desire and an urge to do good, evil is present and it causes conflict. And we live in this do wrong world full of darkness and evil and chaos and a world full of calamity and, and confusion. If you don't believe me, just go turn on your radio. Right. Turn on your television. Right. Turn on the news. Right. Turn on CNN. Ain't a whole lot of good news, but you're going to hear a whole lot of evil. Right. Have we got to win this church? Because we live in a world that's full of evil. The world we live in is full of stress and strife. Overflowing and loaded with the mayhem and madness. Live in a world full of chaos and nothing but calamity. Doom and darkness, havoc and heartache and decadence and deprivation and voidance and violence. Live in a world full of wrong, in a world full of evil, where, where there's hatred instead of happiness, where there's gloom instead of gladness, where there's violence instead of victory, loneliness instead of love. Our world is wicked when it ought to be worshiping. Have I got a witness? It's pitiful when, when it ought to be prayerful. Have I got a witness? It's full of prejudice and it ought to be full of praise. And I declare to you that the world we live in is full of wrong. And it's hard trying to go right in a world full of wrong. But I want to encourage you with three B's. These three quick B's. I'm going to say these three quick B's and I'm out of here. Number one, be transformed. In order for you to press through this thing, you've got to be transformed. Amen. Number two, you got to be not weary. Yeah. And then number three, be steadfast. Uh -huh. Then I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going I'm 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 to get the hit, put the saddle on that black horse out in the parking lot and gallop right on up out of here. Right. Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to the world. Romans 12, it gives us the ingredients and says, but be transformed. Not only does it just tell us what to do, but it says how? By the renewing of the mind. Declaring to you that if you're going to do, do right and do good, it starts with the mind. Uh, now, the mind here in the Greek refers to the intellect, the thought, the understanding, one's will. Uh, one's will. And in order for you be successful in this Christian journey, our minds have got to start, we've got to get on the, the, the road to transformation. Yeah. We've got to put our mind in, in, in the place of becoming renewed and transformed. And one of the best ways and one of the most solid ways to do this is through and by the word of God. Your mind can't be transformed separate from the word. That's where some of us go wrong. We're trying to be transformed, but we're not, we're not hooked, to the, hooked to the thing that we need to transform our mind. Yeah. Some of us don't get no word till Sunday morning when the preacher get up there and read the scripture. Mercy, Mercy me. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Yeah. Tell you, nigga, you got to get more word than that. No, you got to tell him like he mean it. And I say, you got to get a little bit more word than that. If you want your mind to be renewed. See, we quit to complain about all the evil and wickedness, but we ain't doing nothing about it. And the word is right there waiting for you. The word is calling your name and say, open me, I'm a book that I can transform your mind. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. So, so, so it starts with the renewing of the mind through God's word and through prayer and through doing those things that are, that are pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, your thinking have got to be changed. Your thoughts have got to be purged. Your mind will need to be regenerized and renewed and your intellect reshaped. And in order to go right and do right, your mind muscle has, have first got to get in the right place 
for the transformation. God, I can't say it enough. This ain't even my notes. But your mind has got to be put to the word and the word to your mind. Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But we can't do that unless we get in the word. How you going to know what kind of mind Jesus got if you don't get in the word? CNN can't tell you what kind of mind Jesus got. The, 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 what the name of that paper? The, uh, the, 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 the newspaper? It can't get you in there. Star or something like that. I forget the name of it. The mind needs to be renewed through God's word. In order to do right in a do wrong word world, the mind must be full. It must be put in position to be filled with God's word. The mind must be loaded with the scriptures. We must flush out the old mindset and allow God's word to flush freshness into our minds. His word can flush out the old stuff. His word can clean up the old way of thinking. The word of God can bring about a renewal of thought, but we've got to allow it. We can't be lazy. Have I got a witness, church? The word of God can bring about renewal of thought and we allow it. It can usher in a freshness of thinking. We need the word to help purify our minds. We need renewal and refreshing. We need reviving and rekindling of the mind. We need the word of God to give us newness of mental faculty. Amen. The Bible said the renewing of your mind brings about transformation and transformation causes us not to fall into conformation. Amen. Ah, if we transform, we will not come conform. Amen. But it all starts with the word. Tell your neighbor, you got to have word. <laughs> say it again. Now come on now, y'all. Say your neighbor, you got to have word. Where the next beat? Yeah, we got it that time, I believe. Next beat. If y'all ain't got it sitting that right next to your neighbor, I got it that time. The next beat is be not weary. It's in be not weary in well doing. Galatians 6 and 9 says, Let us be not weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Doing what is right and what is good is equivalent to that of well-doing. Sometimes the body, the body, the flesh, it gets tired and weak and weary. It, it is a natural thing. Have I got a witness, church? See, in a do-wrong, in a do-wrong world, there are many obstacles and many hurdles that, that get in your way, and you get fatigued sometimes trying to navigate all this evil, especially when you're trying to do good and what trying to do right and you, you have to hurdle over all these obstacles and these road bumps and all this darkness. And the body sometimes just want to lay down and rest because I'm tired and I'm weary and I'm worn from, from all of this mess that I, that I have to encounter every, every second, every hour of the day, every time I look around. That's something else. Y'all ain't going to bring it in. So many, many things, and even people. Sometimes people just weigh you out and weigh you down. You trying to minister and they don't want to hear it. You trying to give word and they're trying to push back. Even people can weigh on us and make us tired and weary. Sometimes we feel like laying down and on God, and some folks feel like just throwing in the towel. But that same word that I was talking about earlier says, be not weary. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Be not weary in our worship and be not weary in lifting up your hands and praising him. Be not weary in getting on your knees and praying and every now and then turning over the plate. Have I got a witness, church? Be not weary in fellowship and relationship and all the ships, the friendship and the discipleship and good God. Be not weary in loving even your enemies. Loving your neighbor, 
as you love yourself. Be not weary in being kind and compassionate towards all mankind, especially them who are of the household of faith. Be not weary in keeping God's commandments and walking in his word and in his ways. Be not weary in helping the needy and visiting the sick, giving of alms to the poor, giving of tithes and offerings, good God. Be not weary in walking upright and doing that which is good in the sight of God. Yeah, the world is full of wrong, but the word tells us to be not weary in doing good. The world is twisted, it's bent, it's broken, it's lopsided, upside down, inside out, left side out, it's jacked up and hacked up and messed up and all tore, tore up all the way from the floor. But the Bible said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season he's going to bless you. If you faint not, hang on in, tell your neighbor, hang on in there, man. Did they hear you? Did they wave? Did they... Say, hang on in there. Hang on in there. Now, very lastly, I'm going to get on out of your way. God, my line, so we, I hear you today, baby. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. First Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Now, Jesus promised, listen to this, listen to this. Jesus promised the child of God even that we would indeed have trial and much tribulation. Yes. That was a promise. Yes. Right, that's a promise. I, I got a little upset with Jesus when I first found that out. I, I tried to ask him, you gonna promise me trouble? I'm trying to come over here and I'm trying to do what's right and do what's good. And he said, well, in the world you gonna have it, buddy. Right, so he promised, he said, in the world you shall have tribulation. And this old world is, yeah, he, it, it's serving up. It serves up the fullness of darkness and evil and sin and wrong. But, but Paul exhorts us. He encourages with a strong sense of encouragement that we would stand fast in the faith and be sober and sound, solid and firm in the faith. In spite of all the wrong stirring around us, be steadfast and steady, constant and firm. And then he said, don't move from your place of righteousness. Be like the tree that's talked about in the first psalm that's planted by uh, the rivers of water. Good God is rooted in the faith and grounded in the truth. No matter how much do wrong is in the world, you ought to declare, I shall not be moved. And always abounding in good works and, and in the work of the Lord. Always looking to do God's will and looking for an opportunity to tell somebody how good God is. And always looking for a chance to tell somebody about the wages of sin being death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And always looking for a chance to slip in there and say, praise be the name of the Lord. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Always abounding to do good works. Always doing that good, that perfect, that acceptable work and will of the Lord. You ought to always be found trying to do good in a world that, that you know is full of no good. Sometimes things in your life will go south, but, but, but do good anyhow. Sometimes I promise you the lightning will begin to flash. But you go ahead on and keep on doing good. The thunder might begin to roar and the sin breakers start moving and dashing and they're trying to conquer your soul. But you hold on anyhow. Hold to God's unchanging hand when the wind begins to blow, when the lightning begins to flash, when the thunder begins to roll, the hellhounds riding and the devil dogs tracking. When, when, when you grow busted and disgusted, when your money is funny, your change is strange, people talk behind your back. Folks smoke fire, folks smile in your face, but cut you and smile and smile and cut you. And y'all ain't going to pray with me. Keep on being about the business of the Lord. Be not weary. Back again.
against the wall, nowhere to turn, can't go left, can't go right, can't go under, it's too low, can't go wide, it's too broad, can't go high, it's too tall, you just keep on holding on. Tell your neighbor, hold on. The God's unchanging. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you do, brothers, I'm through. I'm through. I don't even need a piano to give me a lot. Because I'm done. Right. But when you're trying to do good yes. in a world full yes. of evil and yes. wrong, yeah, you just hold on, baby. Hold on. And keep your eyes stayed on Jesus. Because yes. soon and very soon, mm -hmm. it'll all be over. Yes. Sooner than one might think. The Bible declares one of these old days, yes. he's going to descend from heaven. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be so glad. I don't know how I'm going to see him, but he said every eye is going to see him. He's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the sound of the archangel. And the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah, I'm going to start getting happy when I see the great. Say amen. Let the church say amen.